Hi, David Jack here, Superintendent of Falkirk County Public Schools, with another video update. Um, sort of a, a lengthier video a video update this time. I'll try to move quickly, but there are five very important things to share with you that you're going to want to know about. Uh, the first is related to vaccines. We had got, received good news yesterday from the governor. Teachers uh, are now considered 1B, so uh, the the um, Vaccines that have been made available thus far have been for 1A folks only, and that's been mostly uh, folks who work in the medical field, etc. Now we're moving on to 1B. Teachers are going to be considered 1B, uh, which is good news. And we don't have an official timeline yet as far as when the vaccines will be made available. Uh, what we do know, though, is uh, that the timeline's been moved up a little bit, but I've still heard anything from three weeks from now to the end of February. So we really don't know when they'll be made available exactly, but I can tell you once they're, once they're available, we will be ready. Uh, we will work with local health officials to provide information to staff about where the vaccinations will be available, when you can get them, et cetera. We'll work very closely with VDH uh, to, to figure that out and provide that information to you. And what the other piece we don't know is, uh, will they be required of staff? Uh, also, we don't know who the state exactly is considering teachers, whether that's teachers only, teachers and instructional assistants, teachers and custodians, teachers, custodians, and administrators. We don't have that information yet, but once we do have it, we will let you know. Uh, very preliminary budget update, just very quickly, because um, I've not made my budget proposal to the school board yet, but I did want to mention that... Um, during the last uh, uh, joint meeting of the County Finance Committee and the School Board Finance Committee, uh, we were notified to anticipate flat funding locally, uh, meaning that next year, uh, as of right now, as, as things stand right now, we would receive the same amount of funding ne next year that we received this year. Uh, couple that with a, uh, a um, sort of a minimal decrease in federal funding, which federal funding makes up a very small percentage of our budget anyway, but there is a little bit of a reduction at the federal end. And then the state budget, as it stands right now, there is a hold harmless component in the, fed, the state budget next year for enrollment, but it, it's not a complete hold harmless. In other words, it doesn't, uh, it's, they're not, as it stands now, providing funding for every single student uh, that we, we've uh, lost as a result of COVID. So we have to wait and see. It's very, very early, but I did want to let you know at least those two pieces of information uh, as we move forward. More information to come on January 25th. Uh, on January 11th, this, this Monday, uh, as the school board um, uh, pointed out in December, uh, end of December, uh, they will be making, the school board will be making a decision about the return to school on January 19th. And what I'll be presenting with them is uh, data, the same data points we've been presenting to them thus far relative to the local uh, situation, the local COVID situation, uh, et cetera. I'll be providing that data to them. It's the same data that's contained on that COVID flowchart uh, that's available on our website. Uh, and uh, the, the school board will, will then uh, discuss and make a decision about a hybrid return to school on, 19th, on the 19th, on January 19th. And as you probably have already heard, the school board did um, approve the uh, start of the athletic season beginning yesterday. Uh, so uh, that's coming Monday, that discussion about hybrid beginning back on the 19th. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'll, but my role then will be just to present them with the data. Uh, next, when, when we return to hybrid, uh, this is mostly for staff here, this announcement. Please, please, please continue to use the symptoms checker. This applies to students also, parents. Uh, but we, we need to all be utilizing the symptoms checker. And if you're sick, please stay home. Please observe the mitigation uh, uh, framework, standards, uh, uh, Etc. that we have in each of our schools, please. Um, the, the, they are extremely important. And uh, once we go back to school, we really need to double down on the observance of those mitigation uh, standards, the wearing of masks, the washing of hands, the social distancing. Um, 
and the use of the systems checker, symptoms checker, and, um, and again, staying home when you're not feeling well. Uh, it's, it's extremely important. Those things are going to become even more important uh, moving into second semester because we want the kids back in school and we want our teachers back in the classrooms. But we want to make sure we're, make sure we're doing it in a very safe way. Uh, last but not least, meal service. Just wanted to put out, remind folks that meal service grab and go will continue. Uh, available Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. You can find more information about the availability of meals and the schedule on the food service link on our website. Uh, you can go there, and I believe it's on the parent information uh, button, a uh, uh, drop down schedule. Um, more information there about times, etc. But I, I believe we're following the same schedule that we have been following. This is just a reminder that we're going to be continuing. All right. Um, that's it. That's a lot of stuff. If you have questions, please feel free to contact us or visit our website. Uh, but this is the information that I know thus far. And most of this information, by the way, is contained on our website. And uh, so feel free to navigate through that. And, uh, and uh, if you have questions, please reach out to us. Everyone stay safe and take care.